guests. I'm Louis Johnson Bastasa from Palintuan Maripuho Hall, and here is my semi-detailed lesson plan in English 9 with a topic expressing appreciation for sensory images used. Specifically, this topic will tackle about sensory imagery. Allow me to start. Everybody stand for the prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, class. Good morning. Before you take your seats, I want you to pick up the pieces of paper under your chair. Make your row straight and have your chairs properly aligned. Thank you. You may now take your seat. For your attendance, say present your name is called Alpha Banklet, Eleodora Franco, and Fire Means everybody is present of the hand. Did I give you an assignment yesterday? Okay, get your assignment. On the count of three, rotate your papers. Only one, two, three. Let us check and you're done. Pass your papers by column. Wow, very impressive score. Okay. Now, this morning class, we will have another lesson. But before that, let us have first a recap of the discussion that we had yesterday. Yes, Leslie, fantastic. Yesterday, we talked about short stories. And what are short stories then? Yes, Bruno, precisely. Take your seat. Welcome to another lesson in English 9. Are you excited? You should be excited, class, because today we will have a game. Are you familiar with four picks, one word? I have modified that game class into five picks, two words. Take a look at this. Okay? Say mechanics class. You guess these hidden words here by referring to these pictures. Okay? Now, these letters here below will serve as your clue in guessing the hidden word. Let's start. Yes, Laila, the hidden words are sensory and imagery. Very good. Because today, class, our lesson will be about sensory imagery. And before we proceed to our lesson, let us have first the objective so that we will be guided as we go along with the discussion. Everybody, please read. Thank you. Sensory imagery. So that we can define sensory imagery, let us have first an activity. Okay? You get a one paper, and then you read this is served from the story, The Boy in the Polar Express. Additional instruction, you are going to read this one and then you visualize it and afterwards, you draw what you have visualized. I'll give you five minutes. Time is up. Veil, can you show me your cute drawing? Okay, this is Veil's drawing class. Very nice. No? Now, based on this activity class or by relating this excerpt to this drawing, can you now define sensory imagery? Yes? Okay, very. That's right. Or in other words, sensory imagery class is a literary device that writers use to employ to engage readers in multiple levels. Now question how do readers engage in multiple levels? Yes, Benefir, that's right through the use of the five senses. And what are these five senses? Raise your hand that answer me in chorus. Yes, Glenn, precisely. No, these are the five senses. Now, I have here class words and sentences. I want you to guess which sense these words or sentences appeal to. We have the first one, sweet. Okay, this is for taste. Another one, this is a sentence this time. The fire warm or frozen toast. Okay, this is touch. Okay, next. How about this? The velvety coat was perfumed. Okay, this is smell. Next. Screaming. Okay, this is for hearing or auditory. And then, lastly, is colorful. And also, this is for sight. All right. Now, remember class, that imagery is powerful. Why? Because it can make something abstract like emotion seem more concrete and tangible to the readers. Now there is a question, how important are the sensory imagery in establishing the atmosphere of the story? The description class will help the reader understand what is happening within the 
story. Yes, class, a question. Okay, class, there is a question. When to use imagery? Hmm. Imagery class should be used at any time. A description is necessary. That's right. Good question, Lance. Thank you, see. Now, it is important to remember, class, that human beings learn about the world through using the, the, the five senses. They are our primary source of knowledge about the world. Therefore, writing which incorporates vivid sensory detail is more likely to engage and affect the readers. No? That's right. Now, this time, let us have another activity. Sir, another activity? Yes, because speaking of writing which incorporates sensory vivid detail, okay, I want you to create a short story. Mm -hmm. You create a short story, you read this instruction here. Okay, I will give you 20 minutes. And time is up, please pass your output. Wow, very nice, no? An impressive output class, I like it. Okay, we're almost done class. Now this time let us go back to our learning objectives and see what we have attained. The first one, we have defined sensory imagery. Very good. We have identified the types of sensory images used in the sentence, no? in our activity. And then, materialize the essence of the lesson using the sensory images in creating a short story, which you just have done recently. No? You created your very, very cute short story. Okay, this time, let us have the last activity, sir, another activity, of course, no? Because this time, class, I am going to check whether you have fully grasped the entire discussion. You get one of crosswise paper and answer this question, okay? Keep the energy, class. We're almost done. All right, read the instruction first and then you answer these questions. And we are done. Okay, pass your papers now. All right, thank you. Okay, for your assignment class, I want you to read the Percy Bensky Shelley's Ode to the West Wind and underline the words that help you make a picture. Because we are going to draw first signs of the visualizations to show what happened in the poem. Do you have any question about the lesson today? None? Are you sure? Okay, if not, everybody stand for the prayer. Let lead the closing prayer, Alice. Okay, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for your active participation today. See you tomorrow. Goodbye, class.